Hello guys, welcome to a new update. So in this update, I'm just going to talk you through what what's been done and give you a bit of a show round to discuss what has been done and what needs to be done. Um, so the overall length of this apex concrete panel garage is seven meters. Now I'm going up to about five meters in terms of the conversion and at some point I've got to decide what I'm going to do about this wall. We're going to put some sort of door in the side and the front of the garage where the main door is, there's two um, school of thoughts regarding this, is I'll either just insulate the back of the door so we can have a front door still or um, put some sort of um, stud wall over the actual door itself and seal the door up with insulating foam. That's another option that may, we may decide to do. Um, but I'll just talk you through what's been done. So we've had the electrician in, we've uh, got the lights, lights set up. As you can see in the back I've got a TV, 32 inch TV set up. Um, I just need to sort out the uh, cabling because it needs a t the, the cable needs to be a bit longer. So if you're interested you can solder two um, bits of um, cable together and then put some um, a sleeve over it, a rubber sleeve or um, some in, you know electrical tape over it. Um, but that's something I'm going to do later. Um, so we've got some pool table lights here, which is uh, it's about um, one and a half meter long. And this is a dimmable. So I've set up a dimmable, dimmable switch there. And we've got some main uh, um, spotlights at the back. I'll show you that later. Um, but I'll just turn it on so you can see it working. So we just turn it on. And that's the spotlights, um, which um, seem to be warm light. And then we've got cool light um, in the actual um, pool table light, which it looks, looks quite nice. Um, as you may have seen in the previous video, um, I put a new window in and some blinds there. Uh, we've got a heater installed there, one of those um, um, electric ones. Um, I've got um, an aerial socket there because there's, there's an aerial on the outside that I set up. And we've got two uh, double standard gangway plugs here. And a special USB one at the back. Um, so that's more or less where we're at at the moment. Now if you're looking at the front and you're wondering what I'm doing here is I decided um, four and a half meters four and a half meters isn't long enough because um, this carpet that I'm going to put down is five meters in length so I thought um, that I need to make it a little bit longer just so that if we have the pool table here, we've got a bit of room to walk around it, you know. So, um, as you may not have known, I had problems with, with using um, floor leveling compound originally and had to dig it all up and put cement and concrete down instead. Um, I should have leveled it a bit better um, and that's caused me quite a lot of problems. So. For any advice who's, for anyone who wants to put concrete down, um, you're going to have to, probably the best thing to do is do it in stages rather than one go, um, if you're doing a small area on your own, um, because you need to make sure it's level as possible. Um, frankly speaking, I was getting a bit tired and I made a few mistakes. So this section here, I decided to put floor level of compound down. Um, it's only a small area, so it was more manageable. Um, I did a pretty good job. The only thing I had a problem with, as I mentioned before, is these panels um, are, are basically, this garage is put in place of an old one, an old one was taken down, so they put, they left the existing concrete floor and then just put a bit extra around the sides uh, to make the garage wider and the, these um, concrete panels are on the, the wider parts of the, of the concrete they laid and we're in the process of um, just making sure that it's level as possible. So what I had to do, unfortunately, was grind some of the concrete away to try and get it level. 
So at the moment, we've got this wooden frame floor that where we're going to put some more um, plywood down. And I think we, we're getting there, you know. Um, but I think it's looking quite decent now. Um, what I just want to say to people out there who want to do conversion is don't get disheartened with all the work that's involved. Um, at one point you may get bored and have and had enough of doing it and just want to go inside and play a game or watch TV. But you need to pe persevere because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it. Um, I want to run through some of the costs because I don't think I've mentioned it, really. Um, it's an expensive job, this. Um, the insulation um, Kingspan thermal sheets that I've used, uh, I got about 18 sheets delivered for around £400 uh, from a company called Seconds. Um, do a search on Google, um, and they'll, they're, they're basically quite cheap. And, you know, I got 18 sheets for around £400. Now, the plywood, mm, very expensive. For a sheet of um, 2.4 metres by 1.2, it's about £30 a sheet. And I think I've gone through about 30 sheets, if I'm honest with you. Um, so that's a lot of money. I think, I think in terms of plywood, the costs are probably around the thousand pound mark, because um, I had to buy it in bits. Um, and then I had to buy um, these kiln dried softwood. Now, it's probably advisable to use hardwood instead of softwood, but the softwood was cheap, so that's why I got that. Cost in terms of the framing of the entire garage, in terms of uh, the, the wood that I've had to buy, I probably rate that at probably around three to four hundred pound mark. Um, so all in all, plus it's not just that. Obviously, the window costs money, um, and you know all your bits and bobs. You have to buy tools. You know, I had to buy a um, belt sander. I had to buy a new drill. I had a, a crappy blue uh, silver lime drill that was useless. Um, I had to buy screws, bits and bobs. So I don't know if you wanna add all that in. I'd probably say there's probably about maybe five hundred, three to five hundred pound in in that because screws cost money. Uh, insulation foam costs a lot of money. Believe it or not, I've used a lot of insulation foam cans. I've probably done about 30, 40 cans in total. Maybe I should have got one of those big containers. Um, but the insulation itself, the insulation foam, I'd probably say a couple of hundred pound there. So if I have to give you a rough idea, about two to two thousand to two and a half thousand pound I'd probably spend. Don't forget there's also the lights I've had to buy, the TV, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick tour for you so you can have a look what I've done so far with the lights. Um, we've got some, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but we've got two um, 90 centimetre um, um, LED lights that, that I've put up um, for the end of, for the front of the garage. Just so there's light, and believe it or not, they generate a lot of light. And they weren't expensive. Um, these were about a tenner a piece. So, you know, they are good lights. Um, the uh, pool table light here, which took a lot of working out how to fit to the actual roof, um, was about £90. Um, the spotlight system here, that we've got spotlights on here, that was, that was about, I think that was about 30 quid, something like that. And then there's obviously the bulbs. The bulbs are really expensive because they're dimmable, you see, uh, as we've got a double dimmable light switch there. So the, the actual um, bulbs um, for the actual pool, ta um, pool table light is probably about £20 and about the same for the actual, um, you know, because they, they got a good, good deal on eBay. Because um, I noticed if I went to the local B&Q store, which is a hardware store like you have in America, um, were really expensive. I think they were about £20 a piece. So, you know, shop around on Amazon and eBay if you want to get cheap, um, you know, LED lights, because that's the, the future at the moment, um, getting the old style lights. They claim these LED lights last 
um, 15 times longer than the old old style. So don't know if that's true, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a rundown of what I've done really. Um, it's it's a difficult project to do, um, so don't take it lightly if you want to do something like this. But I noticed very few people on YouTube um, or on the internet, or if you do a Google search, have done any videos on how to do this. And it was frustrating because I couldn't find anything apart from um, an article on Compton Garages where there was about two pictures showing this, a brief description, and not telling you how to do it. Because um, Compton Garages were selling some brackets and the brackets didn't fit. I had to modify them and bend them to, to actually fit the Concord grooves of the panels. So, you know, I just wanted to do a video to tell you about where we're at, you know, what I've done. Um, what else have I done? I've obviously put some skirting board along there. You know, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? Um, obviously, we've lined the roof with plywood as well as the King's Span um, insulation. The uh, the actual expanding foam, the majority of that has been used in the corners. Because I don't know if you've watched any of the other videos, and I do encourage you to look at the other videos. Um, but the most challenging part of putting the wood in and the insulation in is when we get to that that joint where the actual roof meets the wall um, because obviously it's very narrow it's, 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 it's like that you know and getting the, the actual insulation in terms of that gap isn't great um, it isn't that deep so the majority of the insulation in terms of it's insulating the actual garage to keep it warm is in the roof and the walls but that joint there is the problem so I think that's where we're going to lose some of the warmth um, so let me just give you a tour and uh, show you where we're at but um, I hope these videos have been informative on what you need to do to get this done um, but yeah ju just one school thought um, in terms of an electrician, just make sure you've got a good one, um, because get someone you can trust, um, because what you don't want is someone to do a really bad job. Um, so hopefully yeah, you'll find this useful. So let's have a look. <laughs> right, let's start with the uh, LED um, column lights that we've got there. Let's move across. As you can see, another one there. And if we come across into the garage, as you can see, we've got our heating unit there, a TV and socket there, socket down at the bottom. Moving across, we've got this uh, nice pull table light. Over there, we have a free spotlight. <laughs> So there, as you can see, we've got a, a free spotlight system light, um, giving good illumination to the room. Over here, we've got another um, gangway um, power outlet, as well as our uh, double um, dimmer light switch. And obviously, that's the rest of the garage down there. But I just wanted to give you a bit of a brief tour, show you what we've done. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have I done a good job? Um, I think there's a few little jobs to do, such as putting down the carpet. But I think we're getting there. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think I've done a good job? And I hope these videos were informative. As I said here, this is the, the open area, you see, where the electrics is. Um, and here is where we're going to put a door, side door to the garage. So it's, you know, you know more discreet 
in terms of entering the garage so no one knows whether you're in or not um, and it'll probably go there at some point and obviously there's an electric box there uh, we do have a switch for the main um, collar and um, LED lights and obviously uh, another outlet and there's the uh, power box the you know that controls the electrics in here but I just wanted to give you a brief tour and show you where we're at um, you know do you think I do, did a good job I hope I did and I'll see you in the next video